Well guys, in this video we're going to review a 1978 Sears Model 564.5305-0800. By the model number 564, this is a Sanyo unit. And actually this is multiple things. This is actually Sanyo's very first beta machine they ever made. Um, but it's branded as a Sears, and it was also Sears's very first beta VCR they ever sold. Senya's first entry into the beta format was from 1977, and it is the model VTC 9100, which retailed for $995. It's that what this machine is cloned on. Sanyo also did not have any new models introduced for 1978. Uh, in 1979, there is a Sanyo model VTC 9100A, which I believe is the same unit electrically, but slightly cosmetically different. On the Sears version, the Sears version has the identical model number I just listed for this machine, but it has a black uh, face on here instead of this brushed aluminum. And uh, that's really, I believe, the only difference. And it also would say Beta Vision Beta 2 video cassette recorder. That said, this see, it appears that the 78 model for Sears is much more rare than the 79 model. This is a parts unit that has an interesting story. When I was getting the parts Sony SL5800 to fix the Zenith Beta, as you saw in the previous video, the seller actually shipped the wrong VCR. And I got this one for this the price of shipping because we managed to work out a deal with them. However, this one had some issues and it was actually missing some parts. It was missing the RF modulator, which I'll show. It's actually a modular unit. It was missing some other cosmetic pieces and to top it off, the video head was physically damaged. And it also had some writing on it, like it belonged to a tech school of sorts. Not used as a unit to play on, but as a beta trainer. It may have been used to actually for students to work on. Like they got donated to the school or whatever. That's what I'm assuming. So that explains why there's a lot of missing pieces and stuff. That said, this one became came in real handy to use as a parts unit, because they're was a few uh, pieces I need to borrow off this. This one was in much better shape and had nearly all the pieces. However, the faceplate I had to borrow up here because it was obviously facing the sun and these were all faded. So this is actually borrowed from the parts unit I just showed on the floor. Um, as well, the pilot lamps for the tuner on both, the VHF lamp was burned out because that would be the one that's always powered on, where UHF would only come on when you put on the UHF channel. That said, it's going to be kind of... The only thing I can really do is retrofit uh, an LED in there in its place, because the bulb I need is next to impossible to get, or it's highly expensive. That said, I was able to pull the bulb out of the other one and install it in this unit. Uh, on this machine, all belts are original, all tires are original, except, and this is where it gets really odd, the tire that is on the capstan, not to drive anything up top, but to actually drive the loading mechanism, which I'll show, was completely dry rotted and cracked, whereas on the parts unit, it was perfect still. Meanwhile, on the parts unit, all other tires and belts were cracked or broken or stretched really odd that that happened like that so that said all original tires and belts on this except for that and I just use rubber rejuvenator and everything works beautifully this is also interesting because remember I said the 79 version says beta 2 only look at the drive mechanism it is an AC synchronous motor a rather big motor that fills up this whole side here to drive the entire VCR. The mechanism or the electronics for it's right here. This is actually the run cap, and you can change the run cap 
based on what country you're in, 60 or 50 hertz to get the motor to run at the right frequency. So it's a non-adjustable uh, speed on this motor. It's very interesting, but also if you look at some of the earlier VCRs, there were other video cassette formats other than VHS and Beta for home use. Uh, and Sanyo called theirs the V chord, and that was an unsuccessful format, but it's this unit is laid out very similar to that machine. And also remembering it had one of these in here, and it actually has two fans on it. And I say this is a toilet fan, because it looks like a toilet bowl right here for some reason. Okay, uh uh, uh. well anyhow, um, that's what's in. I'll, I'll show everything else. But yeah, there's a cooling fan up top that sucks in air from the top, and there's a fan on the bottom that actually blows it out of vent on the bottom. And this single motor drives everything. Watch this. I'll turn this. It actually drives the video head drum. The video head drum spins twice as fast as the motor, and it's it's all geared and everything. And also, since I'm turning this, you can see that turns. It's clicking because I'm turning it the wrong direction on purpose. But if I turn it this way, see it has a brake. It's designed to, once it ejects, it breaks that. Okay. Now, and I see you got your mechanical tuner. I just finished restoring this whole thing, both mechanically and electrically, which I'll get into as I go over this. Uh, we will demonstrate it after I finish polishing up the cabinet and putting it back together. That said, the front's already together and polished. I just have to finish the rest. So we'll get over that in a moment. So right now I'm going to concentrate on what's open before I close this thing up. It's kind of cool. All the circuit boards are hinged. Here's like the tuner board. And it just flips up just like that. It's kind of like the, the Zenith Beta I just worked on. There's your tuners. And this side piece here that manages all the servos and other adjustments just folds down just like that. One thing to note when I was working on this that I found out that was interesting, I was getting some interesting problems like on this one, like the video head was bad. And it would go, and I, I was desperately trying to clean the head. I'm thinking, crap, you know, what's wrong? Because the head keeps clogging. Uh, at first it would work fine perfectly for a long time, then it would do, then it rewind a tape or put another tape in and it would be nothing but noise like the video head was clogged one of one of the channels part one of the problem this these record play switches which are is actually uh, mechanically linked for linkage here to actuate it uh, was were dirty deoxidated that but there was another problem and I saw another guy's video on YouTube where he was playing it back and he had these weird rainbow bands in the picture and this was also associated with this problem here. Um, after I fixed this, it worked for a while, then its same symptoms returned. Not as bad, though. What it was, these three potentiometers here. One is for your tracking center adjustment. Uh, that would be TP, um, VR104. VR103 is your playback um, drum speed for the video head. I said it's not adjustable, but there's another C-frame motor attached to the video drum that sort of uh, advances or retards the timing of the video head for tracking and drum speed precision. I'll show that when I go underneath. That said, the playback was so far out that it was giving the symptoms like a clogged video head and same with recording so all three of these needed readjusting and that's all due to it being mechanical and 40 years later I have the Sam's photo fact right here and I followed the procedure in there with the oscilloscope here's one of them record server phase lock adjustment and you have to get that seven cycles seven Hertz with within the um, from the falling edge of the one trace right there 
and same with playback. Some of those were pretty far out. But that said, everything electrically about this unit is still dead on spec from the factory. I'll set a note for 1978 for Sam's. These were the only VCR service manuals they would have had. As you can see, there's Zenith, which is a rebadged Sony. And you can see some for Sony. There's the one for Sears. RCA, which is just a rebadged Panasonic. Quasar rebadged Panasonic. Panasonic is a Panasonic. Magnavox is a rebadged Panasonic. And JVC is a JVC. So yeah, that's all the VCR Sam's had. Ugh, all the service made of Sam's had at the time for VCRs. So that's how things started out. Pretty much back then, you either had a Sony or a Sanyo or a Panasonic or a JVC VCR. And everything else was just rebadges. And here is the back of the unit. This has a 500 watt outlet, line level inputs labeled as camera, line level outputs, and this is your tuner and camera switch. This is where it gets interesting. The RF modulator is in this little box with a little metal handle. And this is what the first VCR I got was missing. As you can see it pops out just like it has a little cute thing. Looks just like an Atari game cartridge how it plugs in. But also note, they even put the Sears logo right on the ARF modulator. Made in Japan. So that's where that plugs in at. But yeah, that's the ARF modulator unit. The Sanyo version was a little different on the inputs and outputs. The Sanyo version actually had separate UHF and VHF terminals, UHF being 300 ohm twin lead. This is the power supply board, and it's outputting a steady exact 12 volts without me even having to adjust the uh, 12 volt adjustment right there. I verified everything for the most part with the SAMs, and everything electrically is dead on from the factory. It's needed a few things tweaked that were mechanical. Here's another shot from behind the video head. Here's the back of the heads. Down here, you, know, you have your control track on the bottom, audio track, erase head for that. There's your video head drum. Erase heads up here in the front. This has a tape slack monitor right here. <coughs> so if one of the real tables happens to start slipping or not turn, this will sense that and immediately stop the unit preventing any damage to the tape. You know, you get into the cheap VCRs of the 90s that don't have anything like this, and it doesn't sense the real table's not turning until it already messes your tape up, and then it stops. This does have a Hall effect sensor on this real table, too, to sense if it's turning or not. So it has many built in safety things. Um, let's see, there's your power transformer. But since there's a whole separate AC motor that doesn't need a transformer, it's powered off line frequency, it doesn't need that huge of a transformer. Unlike the Sony Zenith Beta I just did, that required a pretty beefy power supply. Here's the bottom of the unit. As you can see, there's the bottom of the other fan. The fan's actually identical to the top fan, but it's reversed and it's white. So it flips open. There's your entire bottom uh, control boards. And here's the mechanism. Very heavy flywheels, uh, two flat belts and two square belts to drive the whole mechanism. And I'm going to kind of show you how this thing works. Okay, here's everything underneath. Go in the fast forward. So there you go. Motor. Right here's your video head drum. That's your capstan, which also has a belt in, or a tire in the back. It goes up against that roller there to operate the loading mechanism. 
that drives your reel tables right there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And like I said, underneath the video head drum is another motor connected to that. I guess it's on a clutch where it'll tweak it's like I said, it's just a seat free motor, but it'll adjust the video head drum speed slightly to get proper speed and track, you know, tracking everything it needs to do. But the uh, speed of the capstan, uh, the linear tape speed is not adjustable. Whereas on newer machines that used a DC motor to drive the capstan, where it would both adjust the linear tape speed and the drum speed of the video head. This only adjusts the speed of the video head drum. This is non-changeable for the capstan for, you know, linear tape speed. Uh, the service manual says if it is running off speed to change the pulley on there. But no, it's running at the perfect speed. It, you know, it's set up very similar to like a reel-to-reel -reel unit with that type of motor. And now I'm gonna show what it looks like from the top of the unit without a tape in there. There's a little uh, cover over top, the um, idler wheels and everything. Same thing, original belt on the tape counter. Actually, there's a belt going out to that pulley, and there's also another pulley that goes over to the tape counter here. It's a three-digit tape counter. I'll get into all the functions on the front once it's back together. So the way you make this work without having a tape in there is this lever here. So we'll see how this machine loads the tape. Let's do one of these views. And as you can hear, it's very quiet. Except for my typing over here. Yeah, Harley was being annoying. And um, once it's loaded, um, I'll just show fast forward again. And very strong everything works beautifully this is what rewind will do now for rewind again the Hall effect sensors on this reel here so if I go into rewind it'll kick out in a second because it sensed that reel wasn't turning that said I'm going to show you how the other part works with the tape slack sensor Harley press play now this is playback, and you can see it engaged the pinch roller up there. While I'm holding this, Harley press pause. Sorry, I'm far away. Okay, that's actually solenoid actuated. Now Harley press pause. Again. That and that puts it back in place. Now I'm going to release the uh, tape slack sensor, and this is what's going to happen. As soon as it senses some, it kicks out right away. And unlike the Sony Zenith I demonstrated upstairs, this is a purely mechanical machine, other than the pause being solenoid operated. All these are mechanical. What I was also going to mention, because of the um, AC synchronous motor being a single speed playback and record unit, there are no special effects. And I'll get into that as I demonstrate this machine. For now, I'm going to finish polishing up the cabinet and putting this back together. So here's what eject looks like. And this is what it looks like when you load a tape into this machine. Like this. So I'm going to put it down We'll see how the tape wraps around the head. Just like that. This is what play will do. Again, very quiet machine. This is what pause will do. Okay. And now we'll do fast forward and rewind. Is this is what fast forward looks like. Stop. Brakes work very well. Rewind. Stop and eject.
that's really all there is to it. So now I'm gonna button this thing up, polish it up, and we'll continue the demonstration. This is the bottom cover of the VCR here. It's actually very thick gauge steel when it's heavy. <laughs> I mean, this whole machine's a tank. And this reminds me of like a TV tray, but it's heavy. <laughs> and here it is, all back together again. In the back here has the built-in AC outlet, remote pause, audio video inputs, line inputs is referred to as camera, you have tuner, audio and video outputs, the RF modulator box, and it has only two F-type 75 ohm coaxial antenna terminal. The other thing I'm still not sure on, never got an answer on, some of these are missing, but this is actually removable. Now, you'd think there'd be a cooling fan above the video head drum for whatever reason. It's not. Um, I'm still at loss of what these are for on these early machines. It doesn't really provide any benefit. No cooling or anything. I'm not sure why this is here. All I know there's a blank insert you put in there. If somebody has any info on that, it would be greatly appreciated because I'm not coming up with anything. Even the service lit literature doesn't mention anything. Anyhow, on the front, Sears, solid state. That's right. <laughs> um, you have it off, on, and timer. Only one imperfection on this machine, and it was like that even on the parts unit. The clock set switch, uh, the shaft is broken off on it. I just have to take like a small screwdriver, it's a spring-loaded switch, you tilt it up to set the clock and use the time set buttons, timer set you push down. has an LED clock. Now the next version of this, which is the 1979 model, which also has, has a black faceplate instead of this uh, brushed aluminum, would say Betavision Beta 2 video cassette recorder because it's only a single speed unit. Microphone input jack on the front, and a tape counter, memory, automatic fine tuning. TV and VCR for the RF modulator and your tuner. I'll just turn this into the on position for now. Also, the tuner lights up green, and when you flip them, they both turn on, which is shown by this. Turn off the big light just to, to show you. And, um, Right here, I'm going to insert the 1978 Sears catalog page for this unit. And as you can see in here, it was $985 in 1978. So in today's money, that's $3,869.38 approximately. On another note, I decided to pair this with the 19... 79 Sears, also OEM Sanyo, that I did a video on five years ago. This TV is in mint condition, except it's missing the nameplate up front. Other than that, it's mint, and I actually got this one off the side of the road. It is a Sanyo chassis with a Sylvania picture tube and a steel cabinet. The cabinet pattern is the same as the beta vision has the antenna built in well it actually snaps on and connects there um, so yeah this TV also got a full alignment while I was here now that I got the test equipment to do so and um, done the full alignment on everything now the picture looks phenomenal much sharper so yeah, this is a perfect pairing and totally period correct. Uh, 
I'll also insert the Sears catalog page for this Sears TV right here. Okay, I'm gonna let's do a demonstration on this. And I actually have the Varactor diode tuning set, so two is actually three, but I still like to touch it and put on three. Uh, I always like these Sears is like this. I mean, you don't even touch it. Capacitance touch, very nice. Our first Sears console didn't have the direct access um, channel capacitive touch buttons. It only had two. You had to cycle through it all. But there was only, you know, 12 channels on the TV itself. And even on cable TV back then, there was still only a handful of channels. And actually, I actually wish for those days because, yeah, you didn't have that many channels, but the quality of the programming was phenomenal. Now you got quantity with the quality of being ass nowadays <laughs> so got the beta vision on already eject and this tape's been in our family since new but this is also totally period correct for this machine also being that this is based on a 1977 Sanyo model. Smokey and the Bandit. So we'll do loading procedure. One thing you'll notice is as soon as you load the tape, the standby light's gonna come on while it threads the tape around the video head. So we'll do this. And it goes out. This machine actually keeps the tape threaded around the video head drum the whole time. I had some comments on some previous videos in relation to that. Beta is based on, loosely, Sony's Umatic machines. And it has far fewer turns in the tape path compared to a VHS machine, which is why it was pretty safe to leave the tape wrapped around the head drum. So, uh, while this is loaded, I'll demonstrate fast forward and rewind. Fully mechanical. As you can hear, it's a very quiet mechanism. Cooling fan, cool sucking in air right there. Tape counter accounting. This is what stop does. Excellent brakes. Rewind. Stop. But that's also special, and I'll get into this on another machine. I'll get to what I mean in a minute. This is the tape that was in the machine when I got it. Being that this machine does not have any special effects, I'm going to show it on the Zenith Beta from one of the previous videos so I could do some freeze frames because there's some very special things you need to see. So yeah, this thing has no special effects. I'll also show you what happens when you press pause. So yeah, we got the TV up and running. Let's do this. <laughs> Standby light blinks at actually the same frequency as the clock if you didn't set it. 
and this clocks does not use a quartz crystal it uses the line frequency 60 Hertz and it's been on it's been plugged in for about three or four weeks now accurate very accurate as it lost a second and the TV actually blanks itself for some reason this TV it's not like a black it outputs as a gray um, but yeah, so when you pause it, it just blanks. I'll do it again. Unpause. Takes a minute for it to sink. There we go. Then, as soon as you hit pause, blanks it. So. It's just fascinating how it just uses that big AC synchronous mode to do that whole thing. Now we'll continue with the rewind. This is eject. Remove tape. And down. And now I'll play one more quick clip of another one of my favorite movies from around this time frame. <laughs> here on the Zenith Beta which is a rebadged Sony and we take you back to the year 1985 sounds like I'm talking about back to the future this tape was recorded on a Sony Beta movie a BMC 110 which I actually have and I will do a video probably in the next year or so on and it will be a very special episode as it is a relic of my past. This tape right here was the tape I was left in the machine. It ain't perfect, but use the Sony remote. We'll do frame advance. Oh yeah, you can see where this is going. Actually, I'll just do slow motion. Heck, for... <laughs> it's a LeBaron. Very first shot, and pause. So whoever this came from, your home movies are here with me now. <laughs> Fail. And now the whole reason I really wanted to do this up here on frame by frame advance, Oh my god, is that it? It is! It's the Sears in 1985. So now you know where this VCR is, or has been, back in the day. It looks like they had a cable box sitting right behind the um, cassette door. I'll do slow motion here. It kind of like jumps after this. Probably sitting on top of a Sears console TV. And we'll go ahead and speed it up. Yeah, it's in, it's in like a Victorian era house. So yeah. So yeah, there's where the beta was in 1985. And by then it was already seven plus years old. Like the thing that fascinates me the most is where have these machines been all their lives before I got them? Because the thing that fascinates me even more is like everything in this picture right here is older than me. I didn't even exist yet when these were made. And like this TV here, what was it like when it was brand new when it was first delivered? Or what about this thing when it first came out of the box? It's just always fascinating me. And there you have it. 
the Sears 564.5305-0800 from 1978. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe.